and I uh, I got hurt afterward, and it, it made me very cautious. And that's why I, I don't give a lot of radio interviews and why I don't okay. do a lot of this. That's one reason why. Um, well, I, I appreciate this because, you know, the number of people you're going to help by maybe – uh, maybe, maybe, you know, waking up the American people, what's really going on. Uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, you can wake up many more people by a person like you than talking about a hundred million different generalities. Let me take a call. Chris uh, in Washington, you're on the investigative journal. Hi. Um, Smalley, I just want to uh, say how much I appreciate your bravery in um, presenting this information in the way that you are. I've read your website recently. And my question is very simple. Um, based on the information that you're presenting, I'm wondering what timeline um, the, uh, the organization of, uh, of a larger family that you're describing has for um, implementing the, uh, the New World Order. Okay. I was told it would occur during my generation. I was told that by the year 2050 um, that they would be revealed. Now, again, their timelines changed, though. In fact, I kind of, I think, jokingly referred to them as being like the Soviet Union because, you know, how they had their five- and ten-year plans and then things always got changed. In my own lifetime, I saw several different timelines for things that were supposed to occur change. But as Greg noted, um, I've also heard of from different people that, Actually, there, there's a huge push in the last few years. It's like, it's close, it's close, let's make things happen more quickly. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I couldn't begin to guess whether that's an accurate timeline or not. I know what I was told. I have a follow-up question, and that's it, and, and this will be it for me. Um, I, I have recently, against my own um, resistance to doing so, investigated started to investigate fringe matters, if you will. Among mm -hmm. them, uh, the, you know, the upcoming uh, date on the Mayan calendar of 2012. Mm -hmm. And as I've done this research, it's, um, I've allowed myself just to be open to this information without believing anything I'm reading. And mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the ideas that's presenting itself is, is that around 2012, not just according to the Mayan calendar, but many other theories out there, that we will be undergoing, as a planet, a revolutionary shift, if you will, of some kind or another. Um, and I'm wondering in the back of my mind if there might be any kind of uh, race against the clock on that scale, if you will, especially if we're talking about a potential spiritual warfare, oh, using yeah. your words, in, in, in play here. Do you see a possible relation there? Yes, I do. And... and uh 2012 is an important year, but um, again, I, I was not told that the final revealing would occur then. But I believe that Paul, what will happen is there will be events taking place that will help to set the stage. Um, okay. There's going to be, I was told, and again, I'm telling you what I was told while a member of the group, so please take it with a grain of salt because, as I know, these people aren't always honest or trustworthy. They are deceptive, but I was told that there would be a, enormous economic collapse prior to the revealing, that, that basically um, the stock market would destabilize. Well, that appears to be already happening. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and, uh, and, and it's, I was told it would make the Great Depression look like Sunday school. And, and at that time, it's, it's going to be, they're going to really be manipulating finances to bring about chaos, confusion, warfare, and then, I mean, but see, I don't like to be so negative. I'm just, but I am telling you what I was taught when I was in the group, you know. Well, I so I mean, appreciate it. Yeah. And, and I'm so, sure we all do. Yeah. And so, You're a great I, voice. Well, thank you. I mean, I appreciate that very much. And I, but out of this chaos, they said, would come order. See, the, the group always said, out of chaos comes order. Well, yeah, I, well, I as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, I'd rather uh, just, uh, you know, let things, uh, you know, Svali, these guys want to bring down this country financially, whatever way possible, and right now your voice is important in that, and Chris, I really appreciate you saying that, because we want to stop these guys. I mean, come on, uh, let's get uh, American people to get together and just put an end to this. We have a powerful group in numbers. We may not have the money, 
but we can take it back. And uh, I don't want to be bullied by these kind of people. That's my feeling. Yeah. Uh, let me take another call. Uh, Harper in Canada. Can you hear Harper? Hi, yeah, can go you? ahead. Okay, great. Yeah, go ahead. Great, thanks, Greg. And Savali, I read your um, your expose when it came out in Sweet101.com a few years ago, mm -hmm. and I always wondered what happened to you because you vanished from Sweet101. So it's great to hear about you. A couple quick questions. I'll make them real fast. First is the term Moriah conquering wind. I'd never heard that before or since read it in your expose. I wondered if you could elaborate on that term a little bit. I also wanted to ask you if the, this cult, um, as far as you know, claims to or believes to derive any of its heritage from Atlantis or any other um, lost civilization. Okay. okay. I'm not right. sure about the reference to Mariah you're describing, because Mariah is, is I mean, but I can I certainly address the second question. Um, the Illuminati completely believe that Atlantis is real. They teach it to their children as part of the oral history. They believe it was the, one of the greatest civilizations that ever existed and one of the most advanced. And what they teach, their, their take on it is that Atlantis was a great race of highly intelligent um, people who, uh, who had a highly advanced state but, and who were highly enlightened. And what, what they but what they teach the Illuminati children is that then this prophet of the enemy, who is the prophet of God, came and, and foretold their destruction if they didn't change their ways. Because they were definitely occultists. They were Luciferian on Atlantis. I mean that was the the religion and in fact a lot of the advances that Atlantis enjoyed was was passed down to them through supernatural means is, is what I'll say. And so so they laughed at the prophet, and they, they in fact, they, they, they killed him. And he, I guess sometime afterwards, we were taught that a few inhabitants escaped, but that, the, that but tragically the great city was lost. And, and the Illuminati to this day mourn the loss of Atlantis because they feel that, that these were, that the few survivors that left were, were among the, the, the great um, people who helped found the, what you call the precursors of, of Illuminism. One more quick question, if I may. And I wanted to ask you if you have any reason to believe that the people, men and or women, at the top of the pyramid, so to speak, practice a kind of magic where they are kind of skipping through time, in other words. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, well, well, you know, leaving, the, body, leaving, oh, yeah. spirit, leaving one body, leaving the solar spirit, leaving one body and coming and being born into another one and they're, therefore, oh, yeah. you know, living through oh, yeah. time. All the time. In fact, see now this. Now I didn't go there in this interview because you start telling wacko if you start discussing things like that. But the, in the spiritual side, they very much teach things like time travel, traveling out of body, um, you know, uh, psychic battling, um, things like that. Things that cannot be explained by logic. And I tell things that I cannot explain through human intellect or reasoning that were highly supernatural and involve all of that. And more. Okay, great. It's a pleasure to speak with you, man. God bless okay, you. Okay, thanks, Harper. Oh, hey, uh, I think we have Dave Wilcox called in. I think you know uh, Dave through emails. Uh, yes. Uh, Zvali. Dave, uh, you want to say hello and they have a question for Zvali? Sure. Uh, Zvali, it's great to have you on the air. I'm really glad you decided to do it. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Dave. It's good to talk with you. Yeah, yeah, I feel like you're an old friend. I've been reading your stuff for so long and. Um, you share so willingly and openly about yourself. It's a real honor to be able to speak with you in person like this. Well, Go ahead, well, Dave. You may have something you want to say to Zavali. Go ahead. Sure. Um, 